super fun stuff. Yeehaw! What's up everybody? Welcome to my new channel dedicated to making cool stuff. In this video, we're going to talk about the Tomb Bolts from the movie Who Framed Roger Rabbit. For those of you who don't know the movie, shame on you. It's a really great movie. The movie has real people and cartoons interacting in the same world. Kinda like Space Jam. Except this movie came out eight years before Space Jam. And what makes this movie interesting is it has more than just WB cartoons in it. It has Disney and other cartoons. In one scene, we see Bugs Bunny and Mickey Mouse together. How cool is that? The movie follows our hero, Eddie Valiant, played by Bob Hoskins. You know, the same actor who played Mario in the Super Mario Brothers movie. Valiant is a washed up private tomb investigator that is trying to protect a tomb by the name of Roger Rabbit because Roger was wrongly accused of murder. The bad guy, Judge Doom, played by Christopher Lloyd, wants to erase Roger Rabbit from existence. Oh, and let's not forget about Jessica Rabbit. So that's the gist of it. I highly recommend you watch this movie. The tomb bolts that I refer to are only in a few scenes in the movie. The first time we see the tomb bolts is when Valley goes to Toontown to save Roger Rabbit. He opens up a box that he's been saving for a long time, and we first see a Toon gun, which is this massive six shooter. Then Valiant unveils the Toon bolts, and these guys are cool. They look like they've been transported from the Old West. We then see Valiant shoot one of the bolts. The Native American bullet says nothing, as he uses his tomahawk to destroy a glass bottle. There's only other one scene in the movie we see the Toon bolts. And that's it. So that's the Toon Bolts. So why you ask would I spend time creating these short-lived characters? Well, because they're so cool. I mean, look at them. What's not to like about them? Let's look at the Toon Bolts I've already created. As you can see, I've made three of the six Toon Bolts. From left to right, there's Walter Brennan with the tall hat. There's Says Nothing, the Native American one. And lastly, Andy Devine with the big mustache. Yep, that's their names. I had to look them up because I didn't know. So I posted these guys on Imager and Reddit and received a ton of comments from all of you. There are three reoccurring comments I received. First was shut up and take my money. Second was can you show us how you made these? And the last one was these look like butt plugs. So today I decided to address one of those comments. And no, it's not the butt plug one, but if you're brave enough, go for it. So let's take a look at how I modeled these guys. I use a CAD program called Tinkercad. Tinkercad is an online modeling site that allows you to manipulate primitives to create unique shapes. You can combine shapes or subtract from shapes. It's kind of like playing the Nintendo Switch game Snipper Clippers. If you've used CAD programs before, you should know that they can be cumbersome. Instead of using points, line, and faces, Tinkercad attempts to make your life easier with just using shapes. And I have to say that I like it a lot. I feel like I've gotten really good with Tinkercad and I can almost make any shape imaginable. So after you make your model, you'll want to print it on your 3D printer. So right now I'm printing the next Tomb Bullet, which will take about 5 hours. Right now I'm about 25 minutes in, so it's going to be a while, but I'm still amazed how well this works. Two hours later. It's been 2 hours since I started the print, which is about the halfway mark. If you look up close, you can see some of the details like his scarf and his belt buckle. We have 2.5 hours left, so we'll need to find something to do. Okay? Okay, I don't know what that meant. We're, we're at the skating pond. Cool. Let's go skate, right? Okay. Eventually. Finally, it's done, and it looks pretty good. As you can see, there's a lot of support material on our print. This was added to help the printing process. Luckily it's easily removed, so now let's see what our model looks like underneath. And the print looks okay. There are definitely a couple trouble areas I see, so let's hope that I can smooth those out a bit. Now I'm going to the most important part of your print, post-processing. I follow five steps to finish my print. First I smooth my model as much as possible and prep it for paint. Then I lay down my base colors, then my shades to bring out the details, and I highlight and edge a few areas. Lastly, to protect the print, I clear coat it. 
So let me show you the whole process. Smoothing is the most important and most time consuming part of this process. I really don't enjoy this step at all. First, I take an X-Acto knife and trim all the excess pieces like birds and other print lines. The more you take off here, the easier it is to sand. Then I get the sanding. I first use a medium grit, then a fine grit, and then a little wet sanding with the fine grit. Unfortunately, I ran into a little bit of a problem. Certain areas of my print were too thin and made holes when I was sanding. A little epoxy putty filled in those areas. However, this will require me to sand some more. After the model is smooth, I prime the model. I like to use a dark gray primer because I see all the imperfections. Then after the primer, I do one more fine sanding to fix any problem areas that I see. Then one more thin layer of primer. After the primer dries, the print is ready for some color. Oh yeah! I pre-select my base colors to save myself some time later. I am using an acrylic paint designed for wargaming miniatures called the Army Painter. You can use whatever paint you like, but I notice that wargaming paints have a higher pigment than normal paints. For the first go around, I recommend always leaning towards a shade darker for things. Since we're painting layers, it will brighten up over time. Also, try not to be too sloppy with your painting. It will make more work for yourself later. Another pro tip for painting stuff like this is to learn how your paints work. For example, my yellow goes on very thin. However, my white is the opposite. So I paint a good coat of white on those areas, and I'll paint the yellow over top of that later. This will get the color that I want. And the base colors are done. Also, if you notice, I added an ashy tip to the end of the cigar. All I did was put some glue on the tip and dip it in sand. Later I'll paint it to make it look like it's lit. And now we will want to apply our shades. A shade is just a thin dye that sits in the small details and darkens small crevice areas. For this project, I am using a dark tone or a black shade. With shades, all you want to do is load up your brush and paint in every little space on the print. As you can see, I am painting the spaces in its teeth and it's making a huge difference in detail. With the shades done, the model's looking great. You can see all the detail that I put into modeling this guy. However, shades tend to stain the base color paint, but this is normal. So again, we'll have to apply another coat of our base colors. When applying the second coat of the base colors, most of the colors will stay the same, but there are a few of them that I will lighten up. For instance, the red will be a shade lighter, and the metal color will be lighter. You will basically follow the same base color steps as before. So here's what my model looks like after the base colors and the shades. And wow, it's really looking great. A lot of people would probably stop here, but there are a few more things we can do to make it even better. A great way to give your print even more depth is to highlight and edge certain areas. For this print, I'm going to use an orange for the red scarf and brown belt, a white for the hat and other cartoon effects, and a yellow for the gold, plus I have to paint his eyes and teeth. Since this is a cartoon, I go around certain areas and paint a few cartoony looking marks. Primarily, I paint them on the hat. I then go around the brim of the hat and make a thin white edge all around. This gives a good wow factor to the print. And there you go, he's all done. Now it's time to protect your hard work. I use a low odor matte clear coat. Just a couple sprays and he's protected. And wow, did it come out fantastic. He'll fit perfectly with the other ones. And the moment of truth, he looks great and he fits right in. And there you have it. That's how I make all of my prints. It definitely can be a daunting process, especially if you have to model, print, and paint all your stuff. But in the end, I think it's worth it. I'm super happy with how this turned out, and I'm looking forward to finish the Toon Bolt set. Let me know if you like this video, and if you have any questions. I hope you do the video. I love this one. Is that your favorite one? No? Is that your favorite one? Okay, is that your favorite one? Okay, is that your favorite one? No, yeah. oh, okay. The last one. That was the first one I made. What's his name? Fadden. What? Fadden. Fadden? Okay. I'm going to put him in my room.